crazy world we live in, man. Yeah. Okay, so in here in your panel, basically you have you have three different ways to operate the pool: auto mode, service mode, and timeout. Okay, so this tells you where you're at. Auto mode is just when it's going to follow the programs. Um, so right now we just have the main pump. It's scheduled for 23 hours a day. The cleaner is scheduled for three hours a day. So whenever it's an auto, it's going to do that day in and day out. Okay. If you need to like empty out the pump basket or even maybe your skimmers or clean the cleaner bag and you're in auto and you want everything to shut off real quick and bypass the programs and you put you can put it in service mode okay um, service mode and just whatever you turn on in service mode is gonna consistently run until you take it out of service mode okay um, and then the last one's timeout mode timeout modes like a three-hour program so if you just wanted to run the waterfall maybe for three hours didn't want anything else going on you could put it in timeout turn on the waterfall you know it's gonna do that for three hours and then it's gonna switch automatically right back to auto okay here's your valves so that that's connected to the your your actuators which are the automatic valves and you always got to look at the way the plumbing on is done and you know which actually shut off by what that valve is pointing the off on the handle is point to so this is considered pull mode where a spa suction is shut off and spa return is shut off when you sit in the spa these guys flip around 180 degrees so pushing your v button right here is the same thing as getting on your remote and pushing the spa button it's going to turn on the spa it's going to turn on the heater if you actually put the pull in service mode what you can do is the same thing that we were doing the other day by flipping those actuators okay so right here these are your options pull spa fill and drain that's all about the hot tub okay right now we know we're in pull mode that would be spa mode and if you wanted to drain the spa to clean it then you could put it in spa drain you would turn on your pump um, and the spa is going to start draining down to the pool you'll run all the water through the filter and it'll dump it into the pool and then once you got the spa nice good and clean you switch your valves to fill so you pull spa fill and then you would suck it right back out of the pool put it back in the spa i mean the more you use the spa you probably understand that you know it's going to be cleaner because right. you'll have suction in there right so um so the salt system so i'll show you your cell over there but the first day we'll come and we'll dump all the salt in the pool um and then we'll let it dissolve now a salt system creates the chlorine for you but you have to keep the right amount of salinity in the pool your salt cell of course you can do all this on the remote but the the following day we leave i'm sorry the following day after we dump the salt in there you're going to want to check your salt level and you go to menu diagnostics and chlorinator and that will read out what your salt level is so we have it unplugged right now but we'll plug it in that on, on that day um, a good salt level for your pool is around 3600 parts per million that's we'll, what it'll, mm -hmm. it'll read a, not most of the time we overdo it to be honest with you I mean because it's all computer generated and we try to get as close as we can but but I will leave you two bags of salt just in case we don't and you need to add more salt. So like one, typically one bag of salt will give you somewhere around 300 parts per million. So if you come in here and you check your salt level and just say it's 3300, then you know you need to put one bag in, okay? Now, once you get the salt level pretty close to 3600, then you wanna set your chlorinator. So that's gonna be under settings and IntelliChlor. So as you see right now, it's set on 50%. You're probably not going to have to have it that high because this is all a percentage of how long the pump is running. So in your case, you have a speed pump. It's running 23 hours a day. So 23 hours a day, you're creating chlorine 50% of that 23 hours a day. Okay. 
So when summertime, you're gonna have to be higher because of course you're doing all your swimming and the sun's beating the hell out of the pool. So some, usually summertime, maybe you're around 70, 80. Um, wintertime, you start cutting it back. You know, it's like wintertime, you're trying to get all the chlorine out of the pool. In is, summertime, that the, is that the variable speed percentage or is that no, something you, you bump up? Okay. That's something you bump up to get more chlorine in the pool. Okay, okay and so, that doesn't depend on what the speed of this going 23 hours a day. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And what's a good setting that I should run this for 23 hours? 50? Well, I would say 40 to 50. 40 to 50. And okay. really, you'd actually go down some lower. I mean, you can't, in order to work the salt cell, you have to at least run it 30. Okay. Okay. So uh, I know we had it at 55, and I think I. You bumped it down a little bit. We went it up to 80 when it was, you know, because yeah. the filter wasn't doing good. And then we. And then I think I brought it down to 55 or 50 or something. Okay. I don't know. You yeah, should to save yourself some electricity, you can actually go down a little bit lower. Maybe you wait till you get all your grass and the pool stain a little bit cleaner. Yeah, and the sand still keeps yeah. getting in there. Um, but like if you sit, say you, you've got your salt level tested, now you're ready to set your chlorinator. I mean, the following day after you fix your salt level, you would put this, I would say, whatever, 50, 60, whatever you want. And then you'd give it a couple of days check your chlorine if you don't have enough chlorine well then you're going to come down here and you're going to bump that up to maybe 60 70 whatever you need check okay. the chlorine with the with test, test kit. kit and if you have too much chlorine then of course you bring it down okay that's that's really something that you are adjusting weekly just to keep the right amount of chlorine in the pool um and if you look up top how it says one or two if you go to two or two you can actually come down here and go to super chlorinate, okay? And it gives you an option on how long you want to super chlorinate. All that basically is, is like shocking the pool with all, without all the boost. bad shit. You right. know what I'm saying? Like you can still super, you can still swim when you're super chlorinating because what it's doing is it's putting the salt level, I mean the salt system at 100%. So anytime the pump is on, you're producing chlorine. Okay. So like that's good to do like if you know you have a big party, okay? Obviously if you have like you know 10, 15 people swimming all day long, you know that your chlorine is going to be wasted after all that. So you probably just want to super chlorinate while everybody's swimming and that'll help you keep keep up with the chlorine. Don't need to do a shock or anything like that. If after everybody's done swimming, you no can bag shock, a shock. It. Yeah. One bag well, two or bags. two bags. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um so shock and this makes chlorine, but I don't need to buy chlorine tabs or anything. No, like that. Okay, just a shot. Just a shot. Okay. Um, I mean, you have a three-year warranty on the salt cell. You know, if it does ever break, it it doesn't ever hurt to uh, while while we're getting fixed. I mean, if you needed to put chlorine tabs in the pool, right? Then we time. yeah. But most of the time, you won't use chlorine tabs. This guy right here is just a GFCI plug that's connected to all your lights. So if one of your lights malfunction in the pool and you get water in it or whatever it's not going to shock anybody it's going to instantly blow this plug mm -hmm. and the lights are not going to have any more power um but with texas condensation and all that crap i mean sometimes you'll just get some condensation in here and it'll blow this plug but if you come out at night time and try to turn your lights on and nothing's working then you got to just hit that little reset button oh okay okay can i plug anything to it sure don't really need to. So like I, I mean, if you're gonna keep it. something, I mean, if you're gonna keep something plugged into it 24/7, then you just want to make sure it's closed. You know, don't have it like open like that because yeah. you're gonna have all kind of problems with it. This guy here is basically just like a bell and whistle. It's not something that that's needed on the pool, but it sure does help out with your um, chemicals. So when you're looking at chlorine, you have free chlorine, which you always want to make sure you have plenty of that you're making with your salt system. Okay. And then once that free chlorine has killed bacteria, algae, whatever, it dies. And that's combined chlorine. That is what's left of your free and all the dead chlorine. Now with an ozone system, it's consistently pumping ozone into the pool and that's what's getting rid of the dead chlorine. Okay, so whatever chlorine that you should have in the pool, if the ozone system is working properly, is just gonna be nothing but free. So between your salt system replenishing the chlorine and your ozone system getting rid of all the dead chlorine that right there eliminates the need for you ever having to shock the pool 
Now you can still shock the pool, you know, like after a big party, if you're worried that people might pissed in there or whatever. Right. Um, but for chlorine purposes, you should be good as long as you can keep up with the amount of chlorine that you need. Um, it also does work on like fecal matter and pee and all that stuff too. So, but when your main pump is on, you'll see this guy's illuminated. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to see it at nighttime. I mean, it is an ultraviolet light, so they don't make it easy for you to see it. Um, you're not supposed to stare into it, but if you know your main pump is on and it's not illuminated, then there's probably a, a problem with the bulb or maybe even the unit, but you got a three year warranty on it. Okay. So everything has three year warranty? Yes, sir. Okay. Even the heater and the cleaner and... Um, so speed pump, basically whenever you have it in service, and you're backwashing or whatever, you have to control it by the buttons that's on the pump, okay? So mm -hmm. I have it set up where it'll tell you all your speeds if you just hit the button. So if that's 40, that's 70, that's 60, and there's 80. Um, but it's basically 40 for 15 minutes, 70 for 30 minutes. I don't know why I went from 70 to 60, but 60 to 40 for 45 minutes. And the last one is 80 for an hour. So if you're running it in service mode, uh, well, let's just say this. If, if say, maybe you're having a party and, and maybe the remote's not working or you just want to put it on 80 gallons per minute real quick, you can put it in service mode, turn it on over here at 80 gallons per minute. It's going to do that for an hour. Then it's going to go back to whatever settings are in there. Okay. Okay. Because I have it. I have, actually have the date and time set in here in a program in this one too. So that way if worst case scenario, maybe maybe you get shocked by lightning over there and it ruins that, but the pump's still good, it's still gonna run a program. Okay. So. Um, and you just hit four start, stop. Four start, uh-huh. Yeah. In service mode. In service mode. Service or timeout. Okay. But when it's in auto, you have to control everything off the system. Right. Um, from time to time, you want to empty this guy out. Yep. So it works. You make sure. Did it not that long ago. Okay. But all you do, I mean, you empty it out. You start your pump back up. You can bleed some air out of the system. Once, once the water starts shooting out of there, that pump primes right up, and you're good to go. Um, manual valves. So this is going to be your two skimmers. You can shut off your two skimmers if your water level ever gets too low in the pool. Or you can actually shut off one or the other if you ever got you a manual vacuum cleaner. Basically, it's a vacuum cleaner that hooks up to your pole. And it comes with a 30-foot um, hose. Mm -hmm. And you shut off one skimmer and you plug the vacuum into the other skimmer. Then you can manually vacuum the pole. Plug it into the... Take the cap off and... Mm -hmm. Okay. Huh. And then you plug it to the plumbing in the bottom of the skimmer. Okay. So, but if you ever had a bunch of dirt in the pool and you wanted to brush it a little bit easier to the drains to give your drains more suction then you could shut off both skimmers and then your drains would have you know three times as much suction to be able to brush that dirt oh the drain. that's a good idea as i was wondering i kept brushing the sand down to it but yeah it's taking forever to... <laughs> that's probably yeah because you had everything on and if you ever had a bunch of stuff floating in the pool then you shut off your main drains and just and run the your skim. skimmers okay all the work the bubblers those are pretty self-explanatory on and off, on and off, or off right um the check valve this is a, the guy blowing into the spa always when the, when you're in pool mode so since the spa is higher than the pool if we didn't have a check valve on that pipe gravity would bring the spa down to the pool level every night um every now and then you have a problem with this to where you get something stuck in that check valve so if you come out in the morning before the pool is turned on or during that hour it's off and you see that it's kind of drained down, the spa is drained down, then you just have to take... Screws off? Yeah, take the eight screws off. I mean, you could flip this valve if, over and shut off all return going this way, take out these eight screws and see what's caught in the check valve. Okay. The heater, you probably want to make sure you at least run it once a month. Mm -hmm. um, that's just going to keep rats and whatever out of there that's building nest. Mm. Salt cell. So salt cell, every 90 days, you're supposed to do an acid wash on it. Okay. 
I brought all your owner's manuals today, and that's in the owner's manual. But basically, all you do is you're, you're going to unscrew it from the plumbing. You got these are really just hand tight. You're probably going to want to go ahead and cut your extra wire so you can have some extra wire to play with. He's got it all tie strapped. Oh, okay. But you're going to take your five gallon bucket with a mixture of six to one. So three gallons of water, half a gallon of acid. And you're going to take the whole cell and just submerge it in that acid water mixture. Is that the same acid that you dump mm -hmm. in the pool? Okay. So, and once you, once you put it in that water, you're going to start seeing it fizzle out of both sides of the cell. In about five minutes, it's done. I mean, once it stops fizzling, then you just take a water hose and you rinse it real well. You put it back together. But every 90 days, just try to put you a reminder um, to clean it. Okay. Acid wash it. For five minutes, yes, roughly. So back washing, you probably want to run, and it really depends on what flow you're running, but definitely around 30 PSI, it's time to back wash. Um, it should be getting better, but however, you know, especially once you get your grass and you're able to keep all the sand out of there, it really gets tremendously better. But now that the plaster's a little bit older, you're probably not getting all that dust off the plaster and all that stuff. And we actually have the valve installed correctly. So you shouldn't have to backwash too, too much. Maybe like maybe once a week up until you get grass, maybe twice a week. I mean, okay. that, it'll, it'll drastically slow down. Um, but all you do, I mean, you're gonna be at auto at that point. You switch it over to service mode and you're ready to control off the pump here. So with the pump off, that's really the only, well, two rules really, you wanna go clockwise and you never turn it when the pump is on. But you're gonna just push down on your handle, rotate it to backwash. You wanna backwash at the highest speed, so you would hit speed number four, start. And you can either watch this till that clears up or till your water over there gets clear. Then you go and you shut everything off you want to rotate it to rinse speed four start let it rinse for about 30 seconds stop it then go back to back wash one more time speed four start wait for that to clear stop it back the filter you can either go to speed four or put it back in auto but with the pump running you go to your nearest skimmer and you add 11 cups of that fiber into the skimmer and it sucks it back up from the filter I mean from the pump and puts it back in the filter for you. If you just needed to take water out of the pool, then you just put this guy on waste. And that just strictly drains the pool down. Okay. Um, recirculate, you might not really use that too much, but, but all it does is it bypasses a filter. Okay. So maybe one time out of the blue, you walk over here and you got a filter leaking, your filter's leaking and you need to tear into it and see what's going on, but you could put the Pull and recirculate if people are still swimming or whatever, you know, and, and you can look, 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 look at the filter. If I wanted to get to the filter, I just go to closed? Yes, sir. If I didn't want to run the pump and all that? Yeah. Okay. You just go to closed, and that's going to stop it from backflowing. Um, once a year, you do want to take the filter apart. I mean, it's something we could do for you, too. We charge 150 bucks. Sometimes people want to watch us do it and learn how to do it. You know, if you, even if you go to Pentair's website, they have YouTube videos that'll walk you straight through it. It's really not all that hard. Um, but basically, you would take the drain off the bottom. It's a 7 8 inch wrench. And then you would just pop your air loose and it'll bleed the filter down. So once it stops bleeding down, then you take this guy off. Um, and the filter splits in half and there's eight different filter grids inside there that you have to take out one by one and rinse really good with a water hose. Okay. See, every time you backwash, you don't get everything out. You get most of it, but once a year, you, you want to, they call it servicing the filter. So. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. I think that's just about everything, man. Um, make sure if you're in service mode and you want to run the cleaner, always have your main pump running when you run the cleaner okay if you're in auto it's going to take care of you anytime you turn on the cleaner it's going to make sure your main pump is on but service you could easily just go over there and push cleaner without your main pump being on and if it runs like that for a while it's going to get really hot and mess up the seals okay uh i think that's about it over here any questions on anything uh nope i'll stop this one and you can call me anytime if you, if you might run into a question. I mean, 